Before we move on from Fox, one of the big stories, I mean, it made, it made headlines. Um, and, and I think I told you before, I kind of feel a kinship, a kinship to you because I've had a stalker um, break into my house when I was doing a morning show in Benton Harbor. But I want to ask you, um, as a result of an unstable individual, it was, pretty, it was a pretty big story when it happened. How scary was it? And could you talk about your stalker situation while you were at Fox 2? Sure. I just started getting these weird calls because back then, you know, we had voicemail. But it was like, a, you know, a regular answering machine. And this guy started calling, and it wasn't too weird at first. But then he started saying things like, um, I don't like birds. My sister had a bird, and it died. And then he would call, you know, so bizarre. Then he would call the next time and start screaming at me, you know, saying, saying you told me through the television that we were going to meet on a date. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, I didn't even pay attention to it because, uh, honestly, in that business, you kind of become immune because there are always going to be stalkers and weirdos. And he, the the messages started getting stranger and stranger. And then one day, it was like morning, and I was about to finish my shift, and he, he called and said, I'm coming to get you. And we're going to go to Ohio, and we're going to get married, and I'm on my way. And we did not have security at Fox 2 at that point. <laughs> we did not have the, you know, the gate that rises up when you clear it through the security officer. Right. So he, um, I, call, I told my boss, and he's like, okay, this is it. We're finally moving in after months and months of this guy calling. And he was parked in a parking lot, in a hotel parking lot across the street. And the police came and got him. And he said, I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not, a, I'm not no stalker. And they opened his trunk and they had, it was like tools. It was like a screwdriver or something. So it, it wasn't like he was going to use it as a weapon. But then they put him in the paddy wagon and he was talking to himself and it was, it was so scary. Mm. So that's, so then I did a series on it, of course, to capitalize on it because it, talking wasn't really that well known then. But he stopped. The thing was that he would get a, a mental evaluation after a year. And for a long time, they would, years, they called me and would say, he's still in, you know, he's not mentally sound to come out of this mental facility yet. So I was like, okay, great. And then, you know, the rules changed as far as HIPAA and they couldn't tell me anymore. <laughs> I was like looking over my shoulder all, all the time. Yeah. I even, I had even gotten married and I, I thought, what if he's in one of the pews? What if he's waiting there? Yeah, to see me walk down the aisle and he comes out with a you know a machete or something. Yeah, there's but, people unstable out there, and 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 you know, know it's it's not a Rebecca Schaefer that actress uh, that was oh. in Poltergeist. I mean, it, it, all it takes yep. is an un unhinged fan or yep. quote unquote fan or somebody who's infatuated with with you, and like you said, he thought you were giving him messages while you were on the on the TV. That's just right. insane. That can't have. So were you that. were you scared? I mean, was you, how did your family react to that? That had to be a scary moment. It, you know, it was really weird. I wasn't scared. I just thought that day I was just like, well, uh, this is a little off what's been happening. But I would get those dumb phone messages and I'd save them. But, you know, I, I wasn't really scared. I don't know why. And then when I was getting married, my my now ex-husband wasn't really scared either. And the night the guy got picked up, um, or the day the guy got picked up, I had to have, a, they assigned a bodyguard to me. Mm. And and that was interesting because yeah. he uh, he he had to stay up all night just in case this guy got out of jail or yeah. whatever. And I was like, "Do you want some pizza?" <laughs> no, no, ma'am. I can't eat on the job. I can't sleep on the job. So oh. it was yeah, it was it, weird. But it, it wasn't it, Kevin it never, Costner, was it? Just <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. It, I it was it was just a weird time. But we, I think every anchor at some point has had a weirdo or a stalker or some kind of weird interaction with yeah. somebody either at a, at a personal appearance or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. know, it's, you it's know, bizarre. Don't... yeah. I'm just mm -hmm. thankful when my situation happened that my, my wife and kid wasn't at home at the time. Right. You never know what somebody's capable of. 